Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. Once upon a dime, there was this peasant uh, who had land and money, uh, but he didn't have a child with his wife. And and because of this, there was like a, a hole in his heart. Uh, as he is living his life as a peasant in this community, all the other uh, peasants mocked him for not having a child. And uh, he was like, I'm going to have a child. I don't even care if it's a hedgehog. And then his wife had a hedgehog human baby. A uh, baby boy uh, from the bottom half and a hedgehog at the top half. So it could walk upright because hedgehogs, I guess, don't walk upright. So that's the part that makes it able to live like a person. He doesn't have vocal cords the same way that a human would because the top half is a hedgehog. So he talks by the magic of fairy tale land. The wife is so mad at him, and she said, look what you did to me. Look what you did to us. She had to give birth to a hedgehog. Like, that sounds horrifying. Gave up on the kid as soon as as, uh, it was born, because they were like, "Um, we're not even going to get a godfather for for the kid. We're just, we don't, like, I don't want it. And she said, okay, but we have to name him Hans my hedgehog. So then they took him to get baptized. And then the priest said that Hans, my hedgehog, can't nurse on her because his quills would stab her. Because of the quills, it can't lie on a bed. So they they put straw out behind the stove. Um, And, and like, again, they don't care. They're like, okay, so he can't nurse, whatever. Let's just build this bed back there and hope he exists for hours. The stove will give him warmth. They just, he just was there uh, for like eight years and the dad the dad let's call him uh, Larry uh, and he's like I left this kid in the by the stove for eight years didn't touch him didn't feed him and uh, he's not dead yet I don't get this kid this kid's not my kid one day they there's a fair and uh, he wants to go and he asks the wife, uh, if she wants anything from the fair or from the city because he has to go out to the city to get to the fair. Yeah, and she says all this food. So, household items. And uh, then he asked the servant mm-hmm. what she wants. And she wanted new slippers and uh, fancy stockings. And he's like, all right, cool. You know what? I, I would give you fancy stockings uh, before I would give my deadbeat son hedgehog anything but i will ask him what hey what do you want hans and little boy's like father father dear would you please purchase me a bagpipe uh from the city and he's like just want everything don't you you just want every Eight years, eight years. You didn't, you didn't die. How are you still here? Way longer than I expected. <laughs> Something that came from me to survive without love. Like I just want you dead. Uh, but yes, I'll get you bagpipes. Just don't ask for anything else. And then he goes off to the fair. So, but he goes. Uh, Larry goes to the the fair and he um, purchases all of the items, even the bagpipes. And he brings them home, and uh, he gives the wife her bread and household items, and and gives the uh, the servant it's like, hey, uh, Rebecca, is it here have some fancy old items. And then he has to go over behind the stove, and he brings out the bagpipes, and he's like, hey, Hans, there's your keep it down. The boy understands that dad doesn't like him. Like he's like, all right, I get it. I get it. You don't want me around. Thank you for the bagpipes. But will you will you do me a favor? Um, go put shoes on my rooster, and I'm going to ride him uh, away, and I'm never coming back. 
And and Larry was like, yes, you won't. That yeah. sounds amazing. Of course, it'll do anything. So it goes, and he does it, and he brings it back to Hans, my hedgehog. And, and so then he gets up on the rooster, and he flies away. Hedgehog on a rooster, herding a bunch of pigs and donkeys in, yeah, into right. the forest. Yeah. There, he's in the forest now, and the rooster flies in the tree the, this he now he lives in this in this treetop watching over his pigs and donkeys as he is uh playing the bagpipes up in a tree yeah. and that's his life now for years. for years this is a really um tricky forest because there is a lot of people getting lost in here and a king with a couple servants is lost now in these forests the this wood that um Hans is now residing in. So there's a king. He's lost in the in in Hans's forest, and and he hears the bagpipes playing, and he's like, "Oh, that's a beautiful sound." It was some music that uh, began with "Hello" and ended in "Goodbye." And the king was really he heard it, and he had to find out where it was coming from. So he sent off a servant to find out where the sound was, and uh, he was like. I don't see anything. He looked here, and he looked there, and he looked up. And, and then in the tree, all there was was a hedgehog and a rooster a just hanging out in the tree. There's no way that could be. It was him, and Hans came down and was like, hey, what do you want, dude? And uh, the king was like, I'm lost, and I would really appreciate it if you could give me some directions home. And Hans is like, absolutely, I'll totally do that, but I would like... <laughs> I would like in writing a promise from you that upon your return, the first thing that greets you in your kingdom will be mine. The king's like, ha, it's a hedgehog. He doesn't understand words. So he writes down that he's not going to give him anything and signs it. Hans took him, directed him to the, the kingdom. That was cool. Uh, king enters the kingdom, and the first thing that, that greets him is his beautiful daughter. And she runs up to him, and she kisses him, and she hugs him, and while they're hugging, really quickly, he tells her the whole story about... <laughs> Everything that we just talked about. And the the promise that he made, but really he was never going to keep it, so she, she doesn't need to worry... And she's like, oh, good, because I wouldn't go anyway. So then Hans left, went back to his tree. Kicking it, um, playing some music, and living living the good life. And then just so happens that another, another king was in the forest. Same spiel. Here's the beautiful music that begins with hello and, and ends with goodbye. And... Uh, and sends up a servant. The hedgehog comes down and he's like, hey, uh, what do you want? And the king's like, you know, I'm lost, and I would really appreciate if you could uh, help me get home. Same song and dance. I'll take you home, but I want the first thing that greets you as you come home. Uh, and the king agreed. He just agreed. He was just like, yes, I'll be so grateful. I agree. He was like, you know, a promise is a promise. So uh, he he wrote it, signed it, and he went got directed to the kingdom. And his his beautiful daughter was the first thing to greet him. And he was like... Uh, so there's this hedgehog boy and he's got a rooster and a bagpipe and a bunch of pigs and stuff. Uh, he helped me get home. So you kind of have to marry him. He's like, I'm sorry. And she's like, she didn't want to do it, but she's like, okay, fine. She will because she loved her dad so much that she would do it for him. He's 18 now. It's been a long time. A lot of, it's been four years since the king, uh, the king in, encounters Hedge, Hans is over in the forest again. He's tending to the the donkeys and the pigs to the point where the pigs mate a lot. And if they made a bunch more pigs and filled up the forest with it, he communicated with his dad and was like, hey, you're going to want to uh, free up your stables because I've got so much pig here and everybody in the village can have their pick uh, to slaughter. It's a slaughter fest. So he herds them over to the the his dad Larry's um, backyard, and and his dad's I, sad. He's like, oh man, I thought he would have died out there. I don't really enjoy the fact that we're gonna 
see him again. But I am happy that the village gets a, their pick of uh, some pigs to slaughter. At that point, uh, they had maybe they had a conversation, or and he was like, you could tell he could sense that his dad wasn't really into into him being back with a bunch of pigs and having this amazing massacre. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna leave right now. I got two women that I promised to me. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get all this money, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be somebody, and you're gonna be proud of me. But he asks for the rooster to get it shod again. And he'll never see him for the rest of his life. But the dad's like, uh, absolutely. Right. Is it the first Got it, done deal. Uh, he gets his rooster shooed and uh, heads off to the first kingdom. So he goes out to the first kingdom, but unbeknownst to him, the king told all the servants and all the people of his land and everyone that if they were to see this... Child hedgehog man boy. A hedgehog boy on a rooster with bagpipes. Then they were to attack him. Uh, and don't let him in the kingdom. He's like... No questions asked. I, I mean, that was the first instinct for most people. He gets to the village. They attack him, and he's like, yeah, I got a rooster. The rooster flew up and over the people and went to the king's window and landed on the window and was like, serious? You made a deal. You made a written agreement with me. If you don't pay up, you it will cost you your life. You're in your daughter's lives. And the king was like, all right. Uh, don't kill me. Take my daughter. I don't care. Just don't hurt me. And he gave her a bunch of dresses. He gave her a carriage and six horses and Some magnificent shit. servants. They weren't just normal servants. They were magnificent servants. And money and land. And so they're on the carriage and they're leaving the town. And, and the king, did, it was like, I don't expect to see them again. Yeah. At least I'm not dead. But little did he know. <laughs> Hans was like... Uh, ripping off her dress and he poked her with his quills until she was bleeding everywhere and uh, he was like for your deceit you you this is what you get she was like bleeding in his carriage and he pushes her out and she's he's like go yep and then he goes to the second kingdom and the king there told all of his servants and all the people in his land that if they see this human man Hedgehog on a rooster flying <laughs> with bagpipes. He's like, uh, once if you see this this hedgehog on a rooster, I owe this this boy my life. Please salute him. Give him a like a, a military escort to our castle. Uh, he gets there and he's like, thank you. I here's my daughter. And she, she saw didn't. him and she was scared. She took a deep breath and she's like, I have to do this. There's nothing that I can do about it. So Yeah, he's like he's like, Do you find me ugly? And she was like, Not as ugly as a broken promise. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna marry you. I'm gonna be yours. He's like, I want you to love me. I want you to be you know, I want you to love me. I want you to find me attractive. I'm definitely not attractive, but I need you somewhere in your heart to find compassion and, and feel bad for my oh, dis- deformity. And they and they get married, and it's really pitiful. Like, nobody's really celebrating because yeah, they know they that— they sit next to each other, and they eat, and they drink. It's kind of a sad occasion. And then while they're sitting at the table, he told her not to be afraid of him. He'd never hurt her. Ceremony and all that stuff wasn't happy. And it's, it's approaching bedtime. And he's like, I'm. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. But I will need. I need some. I need four guys outside of this door. <laughs> and I need them to start a fire. A big old fire. And before I go to bed, I'm gonna take off my hedgehog skin, and then I'm gonna throw it at them, and they have to burn it, and they have to watch it burn until it's gone. So it, the clock strikes eleven, and he goes into the room, and he and he does what he said. He's gonna take off his hedgehog skin, and uh, he's going to put it on the bed, and they're going to run in and throw it in the fire. And that's what they do. Then he's lying in bed as a human, and he's really super black, like charred. So, like, it's almost as if burning his uh, hedgehog skin burnt him. So, like, he was still connected to that. But the king, uh, he ordered the physician to come in and, and wash him with solvents and bombs and make him make him clean and so he's no longer black he's uh white and he's <laughs> handsome so now that he is a beautiful uh handsome white man the perfect uh specimen of human they 
celebrate a lot more. They so they go through the they eat and feast and stuff, and it's after eleven. They're like, oh, you got the handsome guy. Let's party now. Eat and drink and be merry and ha- celebrate their wedding for real. For realsies this time, and he inherited the kingdom from the. But he wouldn't have inherited the kingdom as a hedgehog boy, but he inherited the kingdom as this handsome, handsome new man. Years later, he goes to his dad. Because he's still seeking approval. And he tells him, I'm your son. And he's like, no, you're not. My son's a hedgehog. And he's out in the woods somewhere. He's gone. And he's like, yeah, that was me. And he's like, oh, Joyce, let's go back to your kingdom and live happily ever after. (laughs) Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes. We turn the page to find the end.